When faced with something new, we look for information to gain an understanding of what we're dealing with. When you're diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, that information consists of bad news, restrictions, warnings, people feeling sorry for you, people asking if you can eat this or that, people worrying about whether you'll pass out, people talking about how bad your disease is, people talking about all the things you can't do. The problem is, if you feel defeated right out of the gate, you won't bother doing the things that will help you live well with type 1. But a different paradigm is possible. In fact, you won't believe the things that some people with type 1 are out there doing. I was diagnosed in August of 20, 2011, and I was eight weeks from competing in the Kona Ironman in October. So I, I finished uh, five hundred milers. Last August, I did a 26-mile traverse of the presidential range in New Hampshire. It is a 2.4-mile swim, a 112-mile bike, and a marathon. In case you needed something else to do at the end. A couple of my buddies and I decided to run it, and we did it in 12 hours. I finished it in 15 hours and 50 minutes. Upright, not in the medical tent. And then I've done probably 10 or 12 50Ks and 3 or 4 50 miles. So, yeah. It's insane. <laughs> And all of these people seem to have something in common. You know, you think more about the food you eat and how you need to prepare for the race. And I actually, when I was, uh, you know, the next couple years, I was, you know, bigger, stronger, and faster having diabetes than I was before. I'm not so sure that diabetes hasn't helped me stay alive. Because there's this relationship between me and the disease is like, you want to stop me from doing stuff, but I'm going to figure out how to, how to not that, let that get in my way. You know, there's, there's no limitations. There's nothing that you can't do. Um, it's important to me that um, they know that somebody can vouch for um, living a normal life with the disease um, because um, I call it doom and gloom, actually. Um, in the media. I was diagnosed at 15 and I had such wonderful support and met such wonderful proactive role models since then that there's a special significance here. I wrote this idea down on the day that I turned 30 and I want everyone to have access to that same proactive and positive mindset that's been so good to me. A lot of people feel very isolated and think that it's impossible to do the things that others do just because of their condition. And that's been you know, something that we've been working on changing. So if someone is newly diagnosed, even right, even without trying to determine where you're going to focus on first, what area, start talking to other people with diabetes because there's a lot of you out there who really know what you're doing. More so than a lot of us diabetes such kids. <laughs> We're creating a documentary wherein we take a young person newly diagnosed with type 1 and expose them to all of these wonderful groups and individuals. As we have fun and learn about living with type 1 diabetes, you'll start to see a psychological change taking place, both in the young person and in the audience. Insulin Dependence is a community of people that's committed to the idea that exercise and healthy lifestyles are really the best form of therapy. And our programs and events give people the opportunity to do those activities with a community that understands. It's anything from surfing to um, mountaineering, triathlon, running. Um, we just want to make sure that there is something for everybody. This to me is a form of experiential diabetes education. We're all coming together, we're all doing. You cannot get that at a clinic. You cannot get that going into your doctor's office. Live life and diabetes fits in around that and you can go and do the stuff that people tell you you can't. You can sail across the Atlantic, you can go and learn how to scuba dive and you, you can go out and kite surf for hours on end and, and diabetes is, is flexible and as long as you're smart and you're educated around it then, then let it fit in with you. I think the Welcome to Type 1 project is outstanding. I can't wait. Um, when I was first diagnosed, it took me several years before I found um, anybody who was um, living a lifestyle that, that I wanted to lead. 
we as in people living with diabetes have a lot to learn and a lot to teach one another. The idea that playing sports and going on outdoor adventures and surfing and running and all sorts of stuff can kind of clue you into your body more and help you um, come up with better strategies for managing your blood sugars, that's pretty revolutionary. For my parents' generation, it was a death sentence. My generation heard all of that concern. I remember the first time I heard someone, my mom, talk about someone with diabetes. She kind of whispered, you have diabetes. We know that the day you develop diabetes is, is the day the universe has given you another job. Um, and you didn't volunteer for it. Um, there aren't any vacations. And the pay is pretty lousy. In our culture, that model is present, whether we want it to be or not. Johnny's doing this. Uh, this worldwide video about type 1 diabetes, about, for, you know, for young people who have just developed it, they've just been diagnosed, and it's like, holy, right? And it's like really inspiring and basically taking in all the place, people who are like, I'm sorry to speak for you, but you'll, you'll see if I got it right. But, uh, you know, we're, Whoa, we're going for a bike ride, baby! Well, what do you say? You're going to take them on trips through the, you know, the mountains, and you can do anything. Right, so you say it better. My name is Johnny White. I'm a media psychologist and I teach and do research on how media creates our social norms. This project is about media having a positive effect on people with type 1 diabetes. The nurse came in, took my blood sugars, and she says, Oh, you're diabetic, huh? That's how I found out. I was diabetic. And, uh, and I remember being in the, in, in the cab on the way back to work, looking out the window, thinking that my life was forever changed in that moment. And what was I going to do differently from that point onward? What's brilliant about your uh, uh, idea and business plan is the idea that it implicitly shifts that away from this is a death sentence to there, there are virtually no limits and the other kind of cool message is, it's cool to have the piece, which is, kind of, which is nice. This documentary will be translated into eight languages and distributed at hospitals, type 1 clinics, and by sponsors worldwide. We'll also have a website wherein we have a lot more interactivity, a chance for people to share their own videos and tips and tricks about living well with type 1. Johnny, I think what we have to have, and, and there's a lot of good efforts in diabetes, not enough, but what we are missing is how do we, when you or I, the provider, the professional, or that leader of that program is not right in the room, how do we still get the messages out there? How do we convey enough of the right information to capture people, to inspire people, to give them enough key information to empower them? And there are not enough people in the world trained at a high enough level to do that. So the media has to become the next expert in this whole transference of right information and diabetes and, and the empowerment for people. We do know that lots of people do well and sometimes they do well from the very beginning, sometimes they do well over the course of the years when something clicks for them, something happens and they find a way of making peace with diabetes so that it doesn't run their life but they're able to include it. What are you praying for? I pray for diabetes. <laughs> Because people with type 1 diabetes need to know about the products and services that will keep them alive, our sponsors will have a chance to contribute this information in the documentary on the website and especially in the special features following the documentary, which will provide a lot of the basic but very important information we need to know up front. I would tell you too, I think they're going to meet a few other parents on there. Us kids get over most of it. Us kids still keep pushing it and have a blast with our friends, going to school, whatever it is. But I never forget that diabetes is virtually all of the time harder for the parent, and sometimes I'd say that about the spouse, than it is for those of us who actually live with it. The extra work that goes with living with type 1 is a little bit like having to do a few extra push-ups every day, having to do some math problems, having to exercise a little extra willpower. It makes you stronger, it makes you smarter, it makes you more diligent. 
through the power and pervasiveness of the internet and video, there is an amazing opportunity here and good work to be done. They're going to allow it to be a consistent stream of support, which we have never had before. So the power of that is going to be truly awesome. You can control this condition. It doesn't have to control you. I don't think I would take a cure because I feel like I already have, in some ways, found my cure, which is this group and these people. And taking care of myself is my spiritual and mental and emotional cure. And I don't really need, I feel like I need that physical cure. Did I forget anything? Uh, yeah. What's it called? Welcome. 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 Welcome to Type 1.